everyone Krikasa here and today we're going to talk about the October 25th headline for NGS there's a lot of exciting things coming up in November December and even later into next year's early spring so let's go check this out so to start off with we're going to do the last bit of October where we are getting an AC Addy scratch for the AC select support items for this is going to include new high level Addy augments which are going to be hybrid augments where there's going to be two attack stats and can provide potency floor among other substats like hp and photon power these uh, are going to go up to around three percent potency for their attack stats and the potency floor is going to be around there as well but then in addition to these addy capsules of course there's going to be some more support items in there to help you enhance your gear and then for fashion ac scratches we'll be getting a rewind collection 5 for ngs spec halloween items from last year that haven't been re-released yet and then we'll also be getting halloween memories which is a whole bunch of halloween themed items from base or classic pso2 and then for the last thing this week that they mentioned in the previous headline was the ordinal tower so like a boss rush mode going through different ranks all the way up to rank seven where we can get some obsidian weapons through titles and also some epidus armor throughout but for more information on this i'll be making a guide on this ordinal tower in my next video but now actually getting into november with november 2nd we're gonna be getting the next seasonal event the autumn event so there's gonna be a scenery change and the region mag is gonna look different some new rappies and even a new arcs member but during this we can get a whole bunch of different rewards so for the majority of these just like usual you'll get seasonal points to acquire these new items such as this new seven star christia series where it's going to be just like the codec weapons where they're gonna have a specific augment where it does extra damage and extra benefits against the seasonal enemies. In addition to these, as usual, we'll be getting accessories, motion changes, augments, and even some ketchup armor up to six star rarity. But then something a little bit different this time is a new limited time gathering item called Greenola Sight, which you can exchange for relic color variant weapon camos. And then for this mineral, you're going to have to obtain it by either mining it or killing seasonal enemies. And then each of these weapon camos are going to cost 45 of this Greenola Sight. Then they also mention a, another weapon camo that you can get by completing all of the seasonal tasks from this new NPC Ziemi, where you get a digital launcher. But there's even more attached to this seasonal event, another limited time quest, the Practice Drill Crisp Autumn Alio Defense. So in this, you defeat a whole bunch of different enemies for quest points, and you compete with others in your same lobby to get more seasonal points depending on your rank. Hopefully these rankings don't breed toxicity, but thankfully the difference is only by a few hundred seasonal points. Tied to this quest though is an autumn special scratch where you can earn scratch tickets through doing the limited time quest and you can get weapon camos accessories and even mag forms speaking of mag forms though one thing that was interesting is i noticed a mag form that we've already gotten in the past the calamar mag form but specifically this came through a mission pass the season one pass so that means mission pass items are no longer going to be just exclusively tied to mission pass they can show up in other pieces of content including special scratches so maybe if you missed out on something in the past you can see it in these in the future but moving on to the last thing of this week is the next ac scratch ticket celestial saint so this is filled with a whole bunch of deity threads and cyber ninja wear and of course a whole bunch of emotes and motion changes What's cool about the emotes and motion changes is that they are from the winners of the Retem release celebration video submission contest, so we're finally starting to see those to appear in game. For the next week, November 9th, there isn't a whole lot going on, but there will be a new SG scratch ticket, Refined Form 8, which has a whole bunch of casual wear. There will also be a new Mission Pass, Season 14, and then a new Arcs record for the Ordinal Tower Rank 7. What's cool about this time, though, is that there's a solo version and a party version. With the party version, it's just a simple just go in with your party and you can get uh, 20, 40 and up to 50 arcs badges. But then for the solo, it's split up just like in Geometric Labyrinth, where it was between all the different classes. And you try to do the best you can with your specific class and then you can get up to 10 per class. But now let's move on to the second half of November, November 16th, where we'll be getting the AC scratch ticket Overlord style. 
This is a collab scratch with the anime Overlord, where we'll be getting Ainz, Albedo, among other items. I don't suspect that you can really customize these too much since they are collab items, but also keep in mind that there's non-collab items in there just because that's what they do with collaboration scratches. Regardless, look forward to getting your hands on some new emotes, outfits, stamps, and of course, weapon camos, which can include that new body pillow. But moving on to the next thing, we'll be getting the autumn event second half, where we'll be getting more items in the seasonal points exchange shop, new limited time tasks, and even new field races for South Ritam and West Caveras. They'll also be changing up the limited time quests from a daytime to a nighttime limited time quest, where it will change what enemies are in there, but it has pretty much the same premise. But then for the last week of November, we'll be getting a few things. First is the Arcs records for Cannonball Strike, this being a solo one. So just like usual, you can do it on each of your different classes and get up to 10 Arcs record badges. And then we'll also get an AC scratch ticket called Snug Style, which will have a Rappy in a power suit and some baggy overalls or casual wear, even some new cast parts. And then also some more emotes and motion changes from that Retem release submission contest. That is it for November though, but then they move on into December with the Stia updates, now with a new title, the Hellfire Vanguard. This Vanguard name being important because they introduced to us some new characters and some stuff from the story, including Glenn and Kanui, which are part of the advanced team in Stia. But then they even kind of showed off, oh, maybe we're going to be going against Dark Falls here. What kind of secrets are we going to unveil and more? But for important things that they showed in more depth, they showed off some new skills that we'll be getting in Stia, such as Partisan Quick Assault, Twin Dagger Quick Attack, and more, but I don't think this is going to be absolutely everything because we're probably going to get another 10 skill points in Stia to work around with for each of our different classes. And they also showed off one of the 8-star rarity weapons that we're going to be able to get, the Effulgent series. This is going to have an innate fire element to it. And it's going to have a powerful advantage against those enemies weak to it. So it looks like eight stars is going to be the new meta for when Stia releases, but they specifically said that nine stars will not be there, at least when Stia releases. But that's not all they showed. They even showed something more exciting than Stia, a thing going into early spring, the new personal quarters or creative spaces. So when they say personal quarters have evolved, they definitely have. When you look at this, it looks something like Minecraft or Terraria, where you can build your own bases modularly with all the individual pieces, as well as even change the terrain. And you can do this for yourself and also have one for your alliance. I feel like with this kind of setup, you can be way more creative than you could ever be in base games. And also just keep in mind, speaking of base game, you cannot take items from there, like the furniture over to the NGS version. I imagine it's because these two systems are just so different from each other. Not sure what these items are going to cost to be able to put this in here or if it's even going to require premium. We'll get to more information once we get closer to that early spring. But that is it for all the juicy pieces of content coming out in the future, but we have a whole bunch of campaigns during this time as well, including the Stia Expedition prep campaign. Just like with the Caveras one, you can get Stia Expedition prep tickets, but this time you can get an 8-star rarity weapon. I imagine that's one that they showed off, the Effulgent Fire Weapon series. But with this, you're just going to have to complete tasks for these prep tickets, and I imagine if it is the Fulgent or whatever other 8-star rarity weapon, it's probably going to be the beginner one for Stia, not something that you're going to look for in the endgame. And then on the second, there'll be a Christia series enhancement boost, just allowing you to upgrade the seasonal weapon easier, and then a pre-announced urgent quest schedule starting the 9th, which can also include concerts. On the 16th, there will be a limited time login bonus and tasks where you can get some extra star gems as well as those autumn special scratch tickets. And then on the 30th, there will be more pre-announced urgent quests, but with this one in particular, you can complete these urgent quests twice and there will be additional awards and reduced enemy HP. There will also be boost events for the later half of November, try to catch up to get ready for Stia, so extra experience on the 16th extra rare drop rate and seasonal points on the 22nd, an extra drop item preset rate or fix item rate on the 30th, along with some extra seasonal points as well. And then during these parts one through three, the beginner combat sectors in Alio and Retem, the rank one through three versions, will be offering 100% extra XP. 
And then for the last few things here, you can get yourself some extra goodies. So there's a Sonic Frontiers release celebration keyword giveaway on November 9th, which can give you some Sonic series collaboration items, as well as some special scratch tickets. And then if you ever dreamed about being a laptop, now you can. Lenovo has done a collaboration with NGS where all you need to do is type in Lenovo underscore Legion in the in-game chat starting today where you can actually get this emote and be a laptop yourself. Then there will also be some AC and SG campaigns where you can get some extra cosmetics for these two different types of currencies as well as getting some special sets. One of these special sets on the 22nd can include a Mastery 4S, so a guaranteed Mastery 4 to put on your gear. This might be a hint that we're getting Mastery 5 and Stia, but I'm not 100% on that. For the last thing here though, which is pretty interesting, is a concert that they'll be holding, Sympathy 2023, on January 21st in Tokyo, Japan. But you can also, for global users, be able to stream it online, where if you get tickets for this, either in person or in that streaming service, you'll be able to get some bonus items in game. That's all I have for you guys for this headline though. The next one will be on the 29th of November, which will detail out all of the Stia things in December, and maybe even include some more in the early spring with the personal quarters, and maybe even that new Gunblade class. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. I think this next year is going to completely blow everything in the past out of the water. I'll see you guys in the next one though. Peace.